So here we go. Hey everyone, I'm Bren. Um, sharing on Blab again. I love Blab. It's so much fun and we've got a special guest here today. I'm here with Matt Rader. He is the new president of the Pennsylvania Hort Society. How are you doing, Matt? Super good. Really, really glad to be here with you, Brett. Thank you for, uh, for having me. Awesome. So if you are new to this platform, you'll notice on your screen, there's a section where you can chat. Please ask questions as I have, I have a few questions for Matt. I'm excited to connect with you. It's so exciting what's going on over on the East Coast. And um, and I want to do a quick shout out. There's some of our peeps are in here already. We got houseplant gurus on and uh, we got about 16 people watching right now and they'll just keep flowing in. And hey, why don't you all help out and support this chat? And go ahead and click on the left-hand side. You can tweet this out to your followers. Get people over here. We're excited to talk about what's going on in uh, Pennsylvania here. And so, Matt, you got to tell me, what hardiness zone is uh, Pennsylvania? Where are you? I mean, it's a big zone, but. <laughs> We're in zone five to seven here in Pennsylvania. And we've okay. Had unseasonably warm winter so far, as I think much of the, the country has. But so we've actually had. A lot of spring plants blooming already, uh, yeah. but we are zone five to seven. Wow. Okay. Ooh. That. Yeah. I wonder how the weather is going to affect this crazy weather we've been having, or the flowers. What's going to happen? I mean, so you're seeing a lot of things blooming early. Yeah, we had things bloom. It also turned quite cold here over the weekend. So oh, uh, we have people within the society, I think, who could give us a pretty good understanding of what's going to happen with those plants, uh, but it's it's definitely been interesting to watch because it's been in the 70s or 80s here for, for weeks. Great. That's awesome. So we're going to, you know, I'm going to go ahead and take, Lisa's actually got a question. This is, if you're on Twitter, you want to follow her at Houseplant Guru. Um, she'll help you with all your houseplant issues and whatnot. I, I have to take her question because I'll tell you when I was putting this event together, I kept saying the Philadelphia Hort Society because I just automatically think Pennsylvania and I yeah. get so excited. I'm thinking Philly show, Philly show, because it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so forgive me for that. It is the pen, you're the president of the Pennsylvania Horticulture Society. And so Lisa's question is, what is the theme of the flower show this year? Are you, can you elaborate on that? Absolutely. So the theme of this year's show is Explore America, which is a celebration of the national parks. And the show is coming up um, March 5th through the 13th in Philadelphia. And it's going to be an amazing show. Uh, national parks are an incredible treasure that so many people have a personal connection to. I actually worked in Yellowstone long ago, so I'm super excited to see how the show unfolds. And there's going to be um, major exhibits, as there always are, that celebrate all aspects of the parks from landscape uh, to the wonderful rustic architecture of the parks uh, to some of the great monuments in the country like Mere Woods and parks like Olympia and beyond. So it's, it's really going to be an exciting show and really a celebration of the parks in partnership with the National Park Service. So it's, it's really a great, great show for us. And we're super excited and, and eager awesome. to see everybody enjoy so you're now, you're the 37th president, correct? Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Wow. You must have been like, you weren't even born yet when the first one came out, right? <laughs> no. long, long ago. So the society is actually 189 years old. Uh, started in 1827. And part of my background is actually in historic preservation. And so one of the things I love about this job and this institution is our history. Um, so today, you know, we have the show, which is also very, very old, started in the 19th century, and our programs in the city, but the Horticultural Society has had a huge influence on horticulture, on Philadelphia, and on Pennsylvania throughout its whole history, and it just continues to grow and, and, and change, which is amazingly exciting. Very cool. So, um, so I mean, I'm have you been, you've been helping with the show, I'm assuming, so I've, I've literally, I officially get started on Monday. So this okay. is my first week actually with the team. So, uh, so far I have not been involved in, in design, but I've certainly been hearing the exciting things that are happening and and um, the most eager person to learn how this is gonna unfold. Very exciting. Um, yeah, it's, I love visiting um, Pennsylvania. It's just beautiful. It's just full of so much history. I mean, basically, 
you know, the gardening we have that's come across the country, it, it all started pretty much where you're at, right? Yes. Um, there's an amazing place. I don't know if you've been to Bartram's Garden in Philadelphia, which is an amazing garden in southwest Philadelphia that was actually the home of John Bartram, who went out and collected plants from much of the country at that time, and his son made further expeditions. And from there, those plants were sort of shared with Europeans and others. So it is this really amazing kind of center of, of gardening that has really continued uh, till today, starting back in the 18th century. And PHS has been part of that history since 1827, which is pretty, pretty amazing to think of that continuity and all of the people and ideas and plants and gardening secrets that have passed through this organization over time. So we, we love being that center of knowledge and, and the center of this community of gardeners that starts here in the region, but expands you know, across the country and, and beyond. It's really amazing. That's wonderful. So um, I have a question. What is it about gardening that transforms, transforms people as well as places? So this is this is a great question and, and very central, I think, to, to PHS because we have kind of two two missions. One is to connect people to horticulture and the other is to work with them to create more beautiful, healthy and sustainable communities. And so we try to hit on both of these themes. And for me uh, personally, there's there's two aspects uh, of gardening with people. One is the very active, which is getting people gardening and gardening together gets them outside, which is healthy, gets them working together in a very tangible way, which helps build uh, connections and share knowledge. Um, it's also amazing to get people in a place where they're creating something new from turning the soil to planting, to watching it grow to harvesting produce is, is a really empowering and exciting thing for somebody to be a part of and just marvelous, right? You sort of look and think, I did that. I think there's also a piece of gardening that's the kind of passive side, which is making sure people have access to gardens, which is something you can't assume in particularly a, a major city, uh, because being able to access gardens and enjoy them uh, and enjoy the beauty actually has a, a therapeutic, restful, reflective quality on people that I think helps um, calm people, uh, refresh them, and uh, and soothe communities. So I think, I think there's both this active and the passive. And to the half of your question about place, getting people together to garden places transforms um, transforms places as well, which is uh, an incredible asset to communities and helps people benefit from all those passive aspects of gardening. It really is. And I'll tell you what, every time I visit, uh, specifically like Philadelphia, it's amazing to see all the new green innovations going on and just the people you you've got just a wonderful community there i mean it's like i think everybody in pennsylvania grows <laughs> i really do i think it's i think it's probably true i mean in the flower show alone we have 3400 volunteers who take part in the show from who are mostly gardeners by and large or at least care about greening so um and that's everybody from people who are producing and sharing their plants for judging to those who just want to welcome and share information with visitors. Um, and, and the show is really the center of this community. It's a time when people come together and meet their, their colleagues in gardening. And then, like you say, across Philadelphia, which is just one little piece of Pennsylvania, there's a huge array of community gardens, both where people grow food together and also shared ornamental gardens. Um, we have a huge park system in Philadelphia. And then across the state, Pennsylvania is rich with agriculture and public gardens and ornamental gardens of all types. So it really is an amazing state. And in this state, you get an incredible array of landscapes from kind of the flat area in the far east into many mountain valleys um, and into the more kind of wilderness mountain areas of the west. And, and then Pittsburgh again pops up as another city with its own a horticultural asset. So it's it's really an amazing, amazing place with just about every landscape you can imagine. Except the You're beach. Right. We don't have the beach. You're right. I you know, I forgot about Pittsburgh. I was there a few years ago for a landscape event and even you think it's like an industrial, you know, it's gonna be uh and it, it's beautiful. The river that goes through there and it's just all the container plantings that the city put together. It was gorgeous. So so I hear you're kind of a foodie a little bit. Philadelphia yeah. is a foodie town. Um, <laughs> I, and I, I do love to eat. I love even more to cook. 
And particularly, you talked about gardening as a combination of people and place. But for me, gathering family and friends around the table with a real feast is is a huge, um, huge privilege and like my happy space. So yeah. cooking and then hosting and being. And uh, one of the things I've been working on that I shared um, with some of the staff is trying to start the planning for an indoor culinary garden so that I can be growing uh, microgreens, uh, herbs, maybe even tomatoes I was reading about online inside so that I can start to, to create uh, both a better atmosphere and also some healthier, more interesting food to, to serve at those meals. So that's my, my planning brain is in that camp. It is, it is yet to be, but, but I'll be working on it. Very cool. So, yeah, I mean, I mean you, so you're you're talking about you you'll probably be starting some seeds indoors coming up here. I mean, you, indoor you could do it now, pretty much. That's right? the aspiration, totally. And I, I want to do it both for me and also because one of our jobs here at PHS is connecting people to horticulture. And there's a lot of people in Philadelphia and beyond who don't have outdoor growing space. And I want to make sure that they feel like they can also be part of the gardening community and the community of gardeners. So uh, I'm in that camp as an apartment dweller, and I want to, to start this garden both so I can benefit from it, but also to help inspire other people to think about this as a, as a good way to become a gardener. You, you don't need the land. You just need the, the desire and the inspiration right. to figure it out. That's right. <clears throat> I'm kind of like that. I do. I shared with you that I live in Ohio. I've got lots of space. It's a little different than in town, right? But yeah. I just admire all the really cool things you can do in small spaces that I've put together, like just little cubby gardens, like right outside my door and vertical gardening. And we'll have to talk more about that. I, I can help you with that. <laughs> I'm admiring because I'm definitely open to ideas. I was just cruising the web over the weekend and there's uh tons of even people trying to start up new indoor gardening systems. So I think there's a ton of interest in this area. I think there's much simpler ways to do it than buying a complex system, but I, I really want to experiment and, and share that and, and learn from your expertise and others. So any ideas, I would, I would love to have them. Definitely. So if you if you happen to be joining us live right now, participating on Blab, you know, you'll see there was something weird going on right there on uh, Matt's screen. And what that is, is I'm showing him some love. It's like a virtual hug in a way. <laughs> so if you like what's being said here today, go ahead and click on the screen and give us their like a little claps. It's just, this is a really cool platform. I'm excited um, about all the technology going on. So, you know, here I am in Ohio, you're in the big city there, right? I get to talk to you and that's amazing. So um, we had another question in the chat room, um, going back to the flower show, <laughs> of course, right? What, yeah. uh, what is your fondest memory of the flower show? So my fondest memory is relatively recently, which is um, I actually went there on an early date with my current partner and it was sort of a surprise date. And it's a wonderful place to, to have that happen and a wonderful place to go in the winter. So that that's planted the flower show very, uh, very firmly in my mind. Um, I also have been going to the flower show since I was a little kid. I grew up about three hours, three and a half hours west of Philadelphia, but I had an uncle here in Philadelphia who took me every year pretty much to the flower show starting at the civic center in west philadelphia and then as it moved downtown and so that tradition and that ritual of doing it is something that's really special to me and i think something that as i've been talking with people in the last week uh, have found that a lot of people have these traditions and and family traditions of going to the show so uh both both of those things are really really powerful memories really is so well i hope if if you're joining us today please jump right in um there's a little graphic on the side that'll tell you how you can ask a question for our special guest today and also i've got a link there i'd love to have you visit uh phs online ph phsonline.org and the link is right there you can click there and find out more about the pennsylvania horse society and of course you'll have information about the show coming up and um all that fun stuff so please, um bren please do visit um the website has recently been relaunched and we have some great great content on the show on our programs on educational events and lots of information uh about 
gardening and gardening in Philadelphia and many, many topics. So I encourage people to look and definitely let us know if there's things you're looking for that, that aren't there because we're in the process of continually trying to, to improve that interface and, and make it a real resource to the, to the gardening world. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a beautiful website. The, uh, I was on there this morning even, and um, the strawberries on there are just gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, they're really <laughs> lush photographs. It's sort of like bringing you into spring and summer in the garden in the same way the flower show does in, in the middle of winter. It's yeah. Really so we gotta we gotta hook you up with a greenhouse or a dome here. You could be I'm I've got some flowers on mine. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I'm harvesting kale and broccoli. Come visit me. <laughs> All <so> right. <laughs> so um it's really exciting what you have going on out there in Pennsylvania. And so what do you have in store for 2016 and the um PHS? And beyond. So I to, to level set, I'm just getting started. So my first official day is is Monday. I've obviously got a lot of things I've been thinking about, but my goal is over the next six months or so here to really get to know um, the staff here at PHS, the, the hugely dedicated and knowledgeable staff, and also get to know the whole community of volunteers around uh, the surround PHS from Philadelphia and beyond. Uh, like I said, more than 3,400 at the flower show. And also to get to know all of the partners we have in, in city government and state government in nonprofit sector, foundations, et cetera. So PHS uh, is, is really an amazing family of, of partners and supporters and gardeners. And I just wanna get to know that whole landscape. In terms of priorities for us, um, we have a very, very clear mission. So as I said before, one half is to connect people with horticulture, which is essentially your mission as well, I think, to go out and get people connected to gardening and horticulture writ large. And then also to work with people to create healthier, more beautiful, more sustainable communities. And we have really good programs on, on both sides. And so my goal is to work with the staff and our supporters to, to figure out where to grow and how to grow, but to continue to make as much impact as we can in both those areas, both here in Philadelphia and serving as a role model, inspiration, advisor, uh, and an idea generator outside of Philadelphia. So we, we really want to make this a center of excellence and, and inspire others to, to take action as well. Very cool. So um, we had another question in the uh, chat room here, and they're curious to, what do you love most about Philadelphia? So one of the, there's a lot of things I love about Philadelphia. Um, I moved here in 2001. I moved away for a couple of years and I came right back. Um, if you haven't been to Philadelphia, it's a really special city of very historic architecture, small streets and intimate spaces. So um, as big cities go, it's, it's pretty cozy. Uh, and, and I really love that. And that also creates a lot of space for beautiful street trees and street gardens and the kind of things you were talking about, container gardens, et cetera. So I, I love the just kind of wandering the city and always finding a new surprise where somebody has kind of taken the sidewalk and created a sidewalk garden or created their own special space in an out of the way corner. So those, those are the things I love most. We also have this incredible diversity of landscapes in Philadelphia from very uh, almost 18th century country town up in, in Germantown to, you know, beautiful uh, historic row house streets in, in South Philadelphia to, you know, wonderful Victorian blocks and, and grand uh, estate landscapes in West Philadelphia. So it's it's a place where you can kind of take a 20 minute bike ride and find a whole different world yeah. to to explore. Yeah, I mean, even like, so the show goes on and it, it can be a little chilly and wet and dreary there in Philadelphia, but it's beautiful. I mean, even just, you know, going from the airport to right there at the convention center. And then of course, I'm a huge fan of your, uh, the reading terminal, uh, the marketplace across the street. Oh, I love that place. <laughs> it's an amazing hive of activity, right? With the uh, food purveyors and prepared food of, of all types. So, and like you said, a winter's day, between the flower show and Reading Terminal, you dive right into super busy, warm, exciting, exciting places to be. It's really yeah. grab lunch there, or and you've got you guys have so many um, culinary and food uh, demonstrations going on there at the show itself. So um, you don't even have to leave the building either, right? <laughs> that is true. That is true. 
<laughs> so we had another friend on um, the Blab platform here ask, if you ever get to spend time at some of your beautiful gardens, like say Longwood? Yes, absolutely. So in the summer, as I said, I live in an apartment in the city, so I rely on public gardens and parks as my green space. And so right in my neighborhood, there's a bunch of options from Washington Square uh, to Magnolia Garden. But then I'm also a real active user of, of Longwood, of Chanticleer, of Morris Arboretum, uh, Temple Ambler Arbor Arboretum. There's, nice. there's many options, each that offer very different environments, right? So Longwood, you get sort of wonderful grandeur and inspiration and, and the greenhouses are incredible. Uh, to more intimate and quiet and reflective gardens at Chanticleer and elsewhere. So I, I am a lover of all these gardens and uh, I use them throughout the summer uh, and spring. And actually even winter, it's amazing to go to the ones that are open and, and sort of experience the dormant landscapes and, and see what's see what's laying in store and anticipate the, the energy of spring. Yeah, definitely. So as a gardener to a gardener, are you, is there something that you're really excited to grow this year or that, you know, you'd like to grow? So Tell me, my, like, anything. Yeah. As I said, my, my main gardening project this year is this indoor culinary garden. Mm -hmm. So I would love to have year round fresh lettuce on my countertop ready to harvest and eat. And if I can make it happen, I will be very, very excited and, and probably a little more proud than I should be. Uh, so that is that is number number one, and then been reading about growing tomatoes indoor too, which sounds so simple, but um, something that sounds kind of amazing. So I'm excited to try that too. But but it's getting a healthy, active indoor garden going that is my my big goal for for this year. Yeah, there's so many great varieties out there that you can grow in containers as well. It is exciting, all organic, I and mean, it's great. There's great options out there. So if you happen to be joining us in the chat room, we have just a couple more minutes here because I know Matt is super busy. <laughs> you got a lot on your, your plates, don't you, this month? <laughs> Getting situated, meeting all of these volunteers and partners and staff. It's so exciting and wonderful, but it is, it is a very busy time and very, very exciting. So um, at the show this year, where, where will we find you? You'll probably just be strolling the floor or what? You will find me on the floor. So I've set one goal, which is to meet every volunteer, which is 3,400 people. So it's, it's a lot, but I am making it my sole goal to be completely available uh, throughout the show to kind of meet everybody, hear the stories um, that people have about PHS and these traditions, hear people's expectations and aspirations and dreams, and uh, and just be part of that community. So I, I can't imagine a more exciting uh, time to spend literally in the garden inside in the middle of, of the winter, uh, getting to know all of the people that make this organization great. So, so I'll be out there. I may be wearing some kind of uh, new to the team t-shirt so you can find me easily, but uh, but I look forward to everybody who comes. <laughs> That's cool. An amazing show. <laughs> See, I told you, Pennsylvania gardeners are awesome. Like, you're not like you'd be. You'd rather be in a gardening t-shirt, wouldn't you, rather than the, the suit and tie? Oh, right? absolutely. Yes, you want to like be comfortable and and enjoying all the beauty that surrounds us. Okay, so let's see. We do have someone in the chat room asking, how does horticulture play a role in our community? Which I'm assuming she's from Pennsylvania as well. Yeah. So horticulture plays plays a lot of different roles in the community. I think there's, there's certainly um, a huge horticulture industry from public gardens to landscape firms to nurseries. That's a really important part of this region and, and creates a lot of professional opportunities, innovation worldwide. Um, we also have true community horticulture, which which PHS is a huge advocate of, and you and I touched on it a little bit, Bren, but uh, getting people to work together to use horticulture and greening to transform their communities is something that PHS really believes is core to our mission, and okay. we believe it's important in, in many ways, but, but two of the most important are that it actually creates a way to build community, so people to come together around a common interest, find common purpose. And then, of course, the benefits of just beautifying and or growing healthy food and or transforming vacant land into a beautiful garden yield immeasurable benefits to the community, both the people who actively garden and the people who just enjoy it from the street. 
That's great. So um, the Pennsylvania Horde Society is a nonprofit organization, and I'm a you know you so you do most of your funding and whatnot, you know, for fundraisers, right? And um, your members. Yeah. Um, do you um, do you have to live in Pennsylvania to join the you, organization? You do not, and we would love to have you. So the Flower Show is our number one fundraiser of the year. Membership is a huge part of our funding base, but it's also the most concrete way to become part of the community that is PHS. And we really aspire to make sure our members um, can share and access the best knowledge in gardening and in horticulture and urban horticulture. So you don't have to live here. We encourage you to join. Um, it, most memberships include tickets to the flower show. So it's a great way to, to, to kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> There's also a fantastic magazine called Grow uh and educational programs and access to trips around the u.s and the world to to garden sites uh from public to private uh so it's, it's really a special way to become part of our community and, and we would love to have you that's wonderful so we're getting to the end here i know you need to uh head off and it's going to be a great day out there in uh pennsylvania right <laughs> it's, a gorgeous, it's actually a gorgeous day yes it's sunny here in Ohio. I hope we send it your way. <laughs> They're sunny and, and not so cold. So we're, we're happy about it. Right. So thank you so much for joining me today, um, Matt. It's been an honor to speak with you. And I, I hope I get to meet you at the show. Um, hopefully we'll see. Um, I'm, I'm so looking forward to meeting you there and uh, having another conversation as, as the seasons unfold. So thank you again for having me and thank you to everybody for joining and and uh, and I will look forward to seeing you all at the show. So hunt me down. Great. And uh, I'll bring you some seeds. <laughs> all right. Awesome. And any ideas, please send them my way. Thank you, Bren. All right. Thank you. Um, so if you were joining us today, we're still live on the record. I would encourage you to go visit the Pennsylvania Hort Society at their website, phsonline.org. And please... I just shared a link to my website. Stop over to brenhaas.com. You can subscribe there to my newsletter and find out more. Actually, I'm going to be having a giveaway for tickets to the Philadelphia Hort, uh, to the Philadelphia show coming up on my site. So you won't want to miss that. And uh, thanks again, everyone, for joining us. <laughs>